Every motorbike has a good story. I had a friend, Peter Westerman in Adelaide. He said, come quick, come quick, come and save it. I said, what? He said, Livio, the Italian, got the motorbike shop, got a Cami Bello for sale. And I went over there and I rescued that 40 years ago. And I raced it, oh, regularly for 25 or 30 years. And uh, in the last 10 years, we've been taking it to historic Winton. Uh, it's a 350 over in camshaft. And it's called a, a KT something. KT something. It, it means that it's got an improved cam box. <laughs> That's what uh, all the figures tell us. This 500 Excelsior Manx for 1938. Um, the story was my friend Bluey Moore used to work in a small engine shop in Mildura. And a bloke came in one day and he's got a flywheel with a big bloody aluminium conrod. The bloody eye of the conrod would have been at least five inches. And Blue said, Blue said, what's that? It's, oh, it's, it's Adam and Excelsior Manxman. So Blue duly put the new big end and rod in the flywheels. And he said to the guy, he said, well, when do you want to sell that thing? Come and see me. Oh, maybe 15 years. Went by and the bloke said, you still want that old Excelsior? Blue said, yeah. So he goes over the river onto a sheep property. And here's this Excelsior Manxman. Got a Berman gearbox on it, so it had a Kickstarter, had a slipper sidecar, and it had spent all its life rounding up sheep, and, which is quite unbelievable. When we did the history on it, it came out before the war and raced at Bathurst once, and we believe, we can't uh, authenticate it, but we believe it did race once more, and then it went on this big property, rounding up sheep all its life. It, 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 is, it is so rare that, that one there. This motorcycle is a replica of Frank Mussard's factory works fella set. The factory made three of those, what they call the big bellows. Every top racer in the world raced them during their life. Uh, Frank Mussard was given this one when the uh, factory closed down and uh, I was able to replicate it. This is not an original, this is a replica, but it's, everything is exactly as the factory one. And uh, uh, goes beautiful, attracts a lot of attention. Brenda and I were uh, over talking to Pro Hart over in Broken Hill, which we were always favoured to talk to him. And he was telling me that his mate had a big Port OJ for sale. And he said it had run 80 mile an hour at the Adelaide International Raceway. So I was able to buy that little motorbike. It's a beautiful thing. When you look at the originality of it, um, it's, it's perfect. So uh, it's a very good bike to have on your display truck. We, we won the uh, first prize at Yaroa and we won the first prize over at Nathalia. Everybody lo loves that little big Port AJ uh, over these other beautiful things here. It's probably because of the age, I suppose, but it's a... You, you don't see them uh, around much, uh, Rusty, anymore. These, these older bikes like this in such good condition. This uh, outfit here is a 1948 Tiger 100. As you can see, it's got a dusting sidecar on it. To uh, help the old girl along, we have put a 650 Thunderbird motor in there to compensate for the sidecar. I've had that for 30 years. It's unbreakable and it's very desirable. I uh, cannot leave it unattended, otherwise I might lose it. <laughs> this outfit was owned by Ian Hogg from Mount Gambia. And uh, when we checked the uh, engine numbers on it, it was actually bought new by a man who had a motorbike shop in uh, Adelaide and it had raced on the Isle of Man as a solo. And when the, uh, the bike came back, uh, Ian Hogg in Mount Gambia bought it and put the sidecar on it. And, and it's renowned that they had a factory works head and it could beat the Vincents off the line. It won numerous races where it was uh, outclassed in uh, its engine capacity, but I've spoken to the uh, passenger and they said 
it would fire first turn over it, and if you didn't hang on, you left sitting on your ass in the road. <laughs> and uh, anyhow, unfortunately, um, Ian was killed on this bike at Bathurst. Um, we believe he had a medical condition and in the head, and the uh, outfit rider told me that when they went across Skyline, past Reed Park, he was right off line, and they brushed the uh, concrete wall on the outside of the circuit, and it veered across into the armco, and Ian put his arm out, he was on top of it, and had his, basically had his arm cut off, and he bloody bled to death, the poor bugger. We used to go and watch these bikes at Bathurst when we were kids. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they, they were our heroes, you know, that, that running around in these Banks Nortons and with their sidecar passengers hanging off them and all that. And to think that uh, in my youth, I can have three of the bikes that were racing around Bathurst like 40 years ago. You, you lend out a lot of your bikes. Oh, oh, well, I, I just really can't get the enjoyment out of having them all locked up in a bloody shed and nobody looking at them. I, I have a busload of uh, club from Bendigo come here and on the same day we had a mob from Finlay and another mob from Yerildjuri, all sold over. We would have been 120 people in here uh, on, on that day. You, you would only lose two or three items a year. Maybe we've had 3,000 people through here. And I always leave it as an open house if it costs you an electric drill or a bloody magnet or a carburetor, well, I, I can overlook that rather than lock these things up uh, uh, never to be seen. I learnt this years ago that um, the old Douglas engines, they were speedway engines, and of course, um, I'll get rid of that. The crankshafts only last three or four meetings. So if you want a motorbike to, to live, you have to have a, a good bottom end. And this is an overhead valve Douglas racing engine. Yeah. So I've had that one done. That's a BMW crankshaft. We fit it in there. So um, that, that's all sitting down there. That's the basis for my 350 overhead valve Douglas. It's, a, it's an interesting thing, uh, Rusty, and uh, that's the airbox off it. The little thing. And I have all the. Um, Cylinders and the barrels and everything. Look at the little pistons. And uh, that engine is complete. Oh, what does an engine like that work? So you just couldn't buy it, could you? No. The, the old Douglas engines, uh, basically, they're a parade engine. You, you can't race them. If I get that um, engine there to complete, you can spin it to 10,000 revs. <laughs> 